see, um, for those of you who don't know um, the first Dorset, small charity set up in Dorset in 2004. We now do some work in Somerset as well. We have some um, new speaking up groups. I think they started last year, did they, Kerry? Yes. Yeah, with Colleen. So she's got, I think, about five speaking up groups in, in and around Somerset. So we've, we've spread our wings slightly. Um, and uh, a lot of what we do is on the screen there with friendship clubs and the speaking up groups and things like that. Okay. Yep. Okay. Are you Kerry? Yeah, I just... A few things we are proud of. Our management committee, which sits alongside board of trustees. It, it ensures we are user-led with our government governance and we report to mem to our members ne needs we have strengthened strengthened our board of trustees each trustee has an area of experience there there are there has been an organizational restructure we have A full management organization management and part time office manager. Okay. So basically, we've done a restructure. We have. We have updated our policies and employment contracts written a business plan and in in and introduced a new website and mission and strap line we have also done the gdbr and we are data protection compliant by setting up a new database Things three, there is a new people first website to improve our meetings. We received we recently what's it saying? The way we visited. We visited our project where were delivered. We re we revisited how our projects were delivered rather. Sure. Such they meet, so they meet our members' needs. Project funding and looking at ways to find more, as well as developing funding strategies. As I said earlier, um We've uh, expanded our reach and now work in Somerset with the five or six um, speaking up groups with Pauline, which going really well. And despite recent um, events, uh, both Colleen and myself are still very much in contact with our speaking up group members via the Zoom, via phone calls and things like that. Um, it's been a difficult time as it has for, for everybody. But, um, you know, as everybody said earlier, you know, we're meeting those challenges, we're doing the best we can using the technology uh, and keeping people connected. So, um, as they said, uh, innovation, uh, good feedback from our members uh, about how they appreciate still being in contact, still having, um, you know, day-to-day -day contact with people first. Um, national international projects as well there um i just have to add some of this i only started luckily for me i started in march about four weeks before everything closed down 
So I've not had a lot of chance to do a lot of work. Um, I did work part time for um, People First before that. Um, one of the things that was really successful, and I think you mentioned it earlier, Rachel, was um, women's workshop. And um, this was before my time, but very, very much involved. So well, this one's over to you, Kerry. Thanks. Uh, I've I chose to do this one because it's it's um it came from our local gym. As Mark said, we did the women's workshop, and as of that, I've continued to go to the gym because they've been so helpful so far. And if I hadn't have done the women's workshop, I wouldn't have been able to join the gym. But they weren't very good at understanding people's needs. Have you got this one up on the screen, Kerry? Yeah, can you can you read that one though? Of course. Yes, no it's, a bit, problem. it's a bit blurry on my screen for some reason. Okay, no worries. I think it's yeah, it's a bit small. Um yeah, so basically, um what they did, they got together conversations and meetings. Um various uh, services uh, they went to a sexual health clinic uh public transport to do travel training hospital to look at a uh, screening unit uh, which is obviously really important uh a lesson from a breast cancer nurse on the signs and symptoms to look out for to catch things early which is really invaluable um Worked together with Live Well Dorset, joined a session to talk about how to live a healthy lifestyle. Did that involve like um, diet and things, Kerry? Yes, like smoking, drinking, your weight, all sorts of, it involved all sorts of stuff really. It was really, all of it was really quite interesting. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think I would enjoy it as much as I did. Good. But I got some fitness out of it, but I have to go because of lockdown, I haven't been that fit now because we have obviously we haven't been allowed to go back to other gyms. No. But yes, after teaching the professionals how we work, it went really well. Good, good. I think everybody's put a little bit of weight on during the lockdown, don't you? Everybody's been eating and drinking a little bit more than they normally do. Um, yeah. Just to finish off on that page, um, they looked at things like internet safety and friendships, mindfulness, feelings and relationships, which is always good to do. Um, looked at employment and volunteering opportunities, um, which is going to be more and more difficult, I think, after all this. We'll go on to the next one. This is about. This is specifically about your gym story. So if you want to just elaborate a little bit on that very for us yeah well as i just said i i live in dorchester and i visit the gym and they made sure i had a member of support they worked with me with my physio to make sure what they were doing was right and could try exercise to help me get stronger been attending Anytime Fitness for over seven months and that's actually what I'm really missing in lockdown their interaction and because they didn't know much about learning disability before so they've done quite well with that. Mm -hmm. That's all stopped and do you know when that might start again Kerry? Whenever they say the swimming pools and gyms are allowed to open I'm hoping in the next few weeks. Right. Okay, well, we'll see what Boris has to say about that in, in yeah. a day or two, eh? Um, okay, is this you or me? I think this oh, one was you. This is me. Yeah. Um, organisations who work with us, if it's, they gain a better understanding, and that's all about people understanding um, what it means to have a learning disability. Um, some of the people we've worked with, Dorchester, County Hospital, well Dorset, Dorset Healthcare, the gym that Terry mentioned, Fitness Anytime Gym, Women's the Sexual Health Clinic, uh, and a colleague of ours, um, 
is actually doing a course uh, about sexual health and relationships online today. She's going to share with us. And um, I think she said yesterday's um, yes. Mary, that if, if she thought it was worthwhile that everybody in People First Dorset would do that course as well. But that's something that we're keen to develop a bit further. Um, Dorset Police, Bull Hospital Breast Care Nurses. Um, um, we did a thing um, in February, Kerry, at the Dorford Centre. That was all about cancer too, wasn't it? Yeah. So a lot of these things that we're showing here are obviously previous to the lockdown and some of them were 2019. The, late, the latest thing that we did in February was, um, I think it was Valentine's Day, at the Dorford Centre in Rochester. Yeah. That was getting a lot of people together, a lot of uh, groups from day centres around the area, and a lot of people worked specifically with um, cancer care, uh, diagnosis and aftercare and things like that. That was really interesting. So, good. Um now, uh, this is the women's workshop. Was this last year, Kerry? Yeah. was. We'd okay. just like to show you a brief video at the bottom. Apparently this video is about five minutes long, Rachel, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that will bring us just about to the end um, of our little bit. So if I click on that, it should show it, presumably. I've come to the latest group to know what it's all about. The, the members wanted a group that was specific to the issues that are affecting women um, that, that perhaps men would not have such a, an interest in. Women wanted to talk about issues that are pertinent to women, for example their health. It might be things like about self-image, it might be fears around having a, a smear to a breast scan or whatever it might be, those sorts of things. Why do you think it's important having a group for women and not for men? What's been... We would chat about women's stuff. And what, do, you, do you not think men should be there? No, Why? it's too embarrassing. <laughs> it makes it easier talking to people if there's no men there because it's private and we don't want men to know everything that we're talking about. <laughs> it's, you know, talk about lady parts and men don't need to know that. We had a men's group last year and the women decided they wanted one because we had stuff to talk about. Sometimes if you're with men, you feel a bit embarrassed if you're talking about periods or your breasts. I'm hoping that, well, I will feel more confident and we will feel more confident to help each other. Why is it important? Um, because it's, it's, it's your life. It's your life. You've got to learn new things Are your curious about. By the end of this project I'd like to know a bit more about the things I buy myself. I'm hoping to be more confident in what I what I want what I know and what I learn. Five ways you can save someone's life. Looking forward to learning more about um women's health and want to learn more friendship friendships. We've just been eating Maltesers. <laughs> It tastes nice. <laughs> I think with most of us were friends before we started, you know, but it's nice to make some new friends. We have very close relationships as an organisation with organisations like the Hospital Dorchester and Dorset Healthcare, and they've been very supportive, enable, enabling us to, to, to go and have breast screening for the, for the ladies, to go to the hospital and visit um, various units, and to, to have some of their, their professionals come in and talk to the ladies about perhaps sexual health those sorts of things that, um, that we, we couldn't do on our own. So working in partnership with other organisation is fundamental. I'm Claire Franklin, I'm a learned disability nurse with the intensive support team. And we had a few initial meetings, generated some ideas and Zoe and her colleagues sort of did a, a poll amongst their People First members and we also sent some sort of uh, scoping forms out to community teams to see what interest there was from the community teams. Hopefully people will feel, will feel more confident about approaching their GP, um, their health professionals. Been to the breast screening at the hospital, so we know what to expect if, when it happens. <laughs> we had these um, false breasts where we could feel where 
the lumps and everything else, we had that as well, which was really good. Today we're getting on the bus to Weymouth to go to the sexual health clinic and to learn about how to be safe. It's, it's great because it's a really preventative piece of work. So they'll have a much better understanding of what to be expected, takes away the anxiety and the fear. It's, it's supporting people to have better outcomes in their lives. I wouldn't be scared or worried if we had to have you know, something done. Before the um, women's group started, I, I, wouldn't, um, I wouldn't talk about hygiene and the, the breast screening or the um, go to the gym, but now now we've had the women's group, I feel more comfortable talking to them about the stuff we've done. We've done. You, don't have to, you don't have to put on a front, you don't have to act a certain way, you're all on the same level, you've all had, gone through similar experiences. You feel, um, now you get it off your chest and you feel free and um, you feel free and free, like friendship, friendships. We got to know each other better and we can trust each other and talk to them if we need any help. Now it's easier talking to someone if you have a problem than before coming to the group. I've learnt to be more confident. I've learnt to, um, I've made some friends. They've made me more confident in the, in the things that I didn't think I could, could do. I've learnt to be me. For some people I've noticed that they, they can speak up more. It certainly shown us that there is a real need for this kind of group where women aren't able to talk about issues in their lives. From what the ladies have learned, if we were able to replicate it in other areas, it would be great if, if perhaps two or three of the ladies who've attended this group could come along and help facilitate those next groups so that, that what they've learned, they can then support other ladies with learning disabilities in other towns to, to support them to become empowered about women's health and all the issues that we've talked about during these groups. Do you remember anything about that video and what you did? It took, it took us a while and um, we discovered that we had to teach people how people, how people with learning disabilities like their information. So it was a real good video for opening our eyes and other people's basically. Nice. No, I don't have any, uh, anything else to say now. Okay. Um, well, that's what's finished, I think, Terry, isn't it? Yes. Has anybody got any questions? I can see that there's some on the chat. Should we, should we have a little clap of Jan's? I think that was very interesting. I really liked your video. I saw that Jenny had her hand up there. That there was questions in the chat. Okay. So Leslie's asked Kerry, um, whereabouts in Somerset are you doing work? Uh, Yeovil, and this is this is me just going off my head because I don't actually know all of it. But Yeovil, we've done some work through. And you're quite welcome to look it up on our website. I think, um, I think she's been in Minehead as well. Yeah. Froome, Yorville, um, and a couple of other places. Yeah. It's all, it's all there on the, on the um, if you go on um, our website, um, everything's there. It's Colleen in Somerset. And Rosie's asked, how many people were part of your women's group? Um, quite, a f quite a few, I can't remember exactly. Have you got a guess at how many there might have been? Um, about seven. Cool. And, and all those people that won the video, obviously, because that that and that, that included myself. So, mm -hmm. 
And where did you run your groups? In um, Dorchester, which is where I live, and where our office, where our office is based. But we do most of our stuff, as you see, out in the community. But but most of that was based in Dorchester because they were done in later in the evenings. Also, I think um, like got Dorchester County Hospital and a lot of the services are concentrated for the for the area I think in Dorchester as well aren't they um yeah very, a lot of Dorchester yeah. and Poole so um yeah, it's it's probably that's why it was done there and uh, Leslie's asked um have you thought about doing a men's group yeah they they had they had a men's group uh another colleague of mine was running that and they had a they had similar experiences, I think. That's where we got it from in the first place. Mm. They did the men's group first before they did the women's group. Okay. And then I the women decided they wanted one. Yeah. As far as the speaking up groups, I run it's definitely something that we want to um, you know, do more work on uh, with groups around the county. Um, uh, I know when I worked at Bridport Next, the day centre there, we had a community nurse come in to speak to just, just the men uh, about testicular cancer and various other things, prostate cancer, that were specifically to do with men's health issues and um, something that I'd like to do more of within the speaking up group scenario. Um, I think it's really important. Yes, we learned that we don't speak enough about our health. That's the main thing we learned. I can't work out how to put my hands up. I just wanted to ask a question, if that's okay. Yeah, Mark, can I stop sharing your screen and then I can see everyone? Because I, I can't see. Yeah, we're done. Yeah. Do, do I need to get rid of that now, Rich? Uh, I, I can do it. And then we can share oh, you your can, contact yeah, details afterwards if anybody wants them. Sorry, I don't know who that was that was speaking. Oh, it was me, the other Jenny. Oh, hi, Jenny. I, I, that was brilliant. Thanks. And the film was great. And to Mark as well. Um, it was It's My Life in West Berkshire. It's quite a small self-advocacy group. We've been trying to focus on, and we've had um, courses and things on healthy living and exercise. But the problem we find is, well, all of us find it really difficult <laughs> exercising, eating the right things. And as you said, Kerry, with the extra people not communicating the right way, obviously there's even hard for people to learn disabilities. How much did you have to work hard to encourage people to come to the group before they discovered it was going to be friendly and helpful and not push them? So that was that was really quite hard to do, but because most of us knew what we wanted, it was quite it was quite easy, but I think it might be more difficult if you were trying to engage the complex needs. I think that was some of my own learning. How you how we engage people in the group. Mm, thanks. Yes, it, I mean our group wants to and knows they need to lose weight but it's that thing of yeah, like all of us one week you're really focused and the next week you're like oh no they're just going to tell me not to eat more chocolate and it's like no i don't want to go no but i think what you yeah what you said about it starting your years in the gym kelly that was just really yeah really inspiring yeah and i i i think the plan is eventually to get another group sorted eventually where we i've really enjoyed i really enjoyed the women's group and i didn't think i would mm. i didn't think there was much i had to um left to learn about but there was lots of stuff i learned about myself and lots of stuff it like the film they learn in their their how to do stuff mm. so yeah if we share if after this meeting we share all the details, I'll help you to find out how we did it. Mm, that'd be great, thank you. So I can see a couple of hands. Should we go Russell, Naomi, Jan? Is that okay? 
Morning, girl. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yep. Right. And uh, on the on the Thursday morning, I joined Dean Daniels and the men's group, and we have like about six or seven men talk about how we doing, like on lockdown and everything else like that. But mm -hmm. we got a chap called Daniel Hall who's joining us this week. Turn to questions at eleven o'clock. Well, I say, Rachel and Kerry, uh, I I live in like supported living, and I'm part of the uh, we are together. We are able. Daniel will tell me off later about. Then we, we have like uh, speak up, be heard, and you know, like in the world and everywhere. So like anybody's quite welcome to join. Like uh, then we have like yourself have a catch up. Have you known? Yeah. Yeah. See, she's telling me off now. She together or evil. <laughs> See what I mean? She put in chat then. Okay. Yes. That, that's from me. Thanks, Russell. Now you're me. Yeah, I was wanting to say something about exercise. So where I live in Manchester, there's a running group and the Down Syndrome Association did some training with the running group so they could do an accessible group and I think it was on our local news but they're saying that if it works well then they'll try and do it in lots of other places I think they've tried it in Manchester and somewhere else but they're hoping to do it in lots of other places we've not been able to do it during the lockdown because you know we're not supposed to be seeing lots of groups of people but before that it worked really well Sounds good. Thanks for sharing. Jan? Uh, yes, thank you so much, both of you. That was such a wonderful project to start us off. And uh, I, think, I think what was really special about what you did was that it wasn't just teaching the women, it was teaching the professionals and the services how to yeah. um, behave so that they encourage women with learning disabilities to join them and work with them rather than it all being the pressure on you to change and that's why i thought it was so um inspiring really that uh, that you had that idea and i i just think it's frustrating that you know there aren't more opportunities like this for you to for other groups to learn yeah the money and what you might do and you know it's really really important i think that we have these opportunities so thank you so much there's a couple of questions left in the chat um so we might do a couple and then um we might move on to the next group if that's okay with everybody um so sammy asked um where do you get your funding for this project well some of it some of it believe it or not some i think some came from dorset healthcare but some of it came from the something called the tampon tax that we learned about and what's that it's a i think though i'm not sure a hundred percent it's it comes from the tampon people that they they have some money to give to groups and i think that's where most of it came from mm -hmm. yeah, according to this the, the, the slide show that i've got funded by dorset community foundation through tampon tax that's what it says on here so yeah that's, that's where that money came from specifically for that workshop um for other for other things like probably other organizations money you know they we apply for funding from various different organizations like the lottery and things like that and we've been, we've been quite fortunate um the reason i became went from part time to full time on the speaking up groups was that um uh, uh, the two lauras were were uh, clever enough to get some funding from the national lottery to fund the position um for me to do the work the speaking up groups so just like everybody else looking around for funding opportunities and um when in the 
the best bid that you can, get the money if you can. And I think that's going to be more and more difficult after the last few months because money will be very much at a premium, I think, um, it's available out there. So um, good luck to everybody with that. And then I, I think in the chat, there's a few people saying that they do women's groups as well. Um, and that maybe some of the different women's groups could meet together and from different places. Yeah. But I don't know if you guys would be up for that. Um, yeah. But um, we could help everyone get in touch if um, people want to. Mm -hmm. 